This is All India Radio. I'm Anubha Rohatgi and with me is Saira Mujtaba with the Midday News. The headlines. Country's COVID-19 recovery rate crosses 88%. Rescue and relief operations in full swing in the rain-ravished parts of Telangana, Karnataka and Maharashtra. Brahmos, a supersonic cruise missile, successfully test-fired today from Indian Navy's indigenously built stealth destroyer INS Chennai in Arabian Sea. BJP leader and Union Home Minister Amit Shah says Nitish Kumar will be the next Chief Minister of Bihar even if the BJP gets more seats. National capital Delhi's air quality continues to be poor as stubble burning in neighbouring states causes concern. And in IPL cricket today, Sunrisers Hyderabad will take on Kolkata Knight Riders in Abu Dhabi while the Mumbai Indians face Kings XI Punjab in Dubai. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain two gas ki duri for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. In a remarkable development, the country's COVID-19 recovery rate has crossed 88%, the health ministry said today. The government said the total number of recoveries has reached over 65,97,000. Presently, the total number of active cases in the country is 7,83,000 and the case fatality rate is at 1.52%, which is one of the lowest globally. The constantly increasing recoveries ensured that the actual caseload of the country is considerably reduced and currently comprises only 10.45% of the total positive cases. In the last 24 hours, more than 72,000 COVID patients have recovered and 61,871 new cases have been reported. The total number of positive cases now in the country is over 74 lakhs. The ministry said effective implementation of centre's strategic and graded T3 strategy, test, track and treat approach, has led to higher recoveries and lower fatality. In the last 24 hours, 1,033 deaths were reported, taking the toll to 1,14,031. According to the Indian Council of Medical Research, more than 9,70,000 tests were conducted during the last 24 hours. The total number of samples tested so far has reached 9 crore 42 lakh. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reviewed the situation of COVID-19 pandemic and the preparedness of vaccine delivery, distribution and administration in the country. The Prime Minister noted the steady decline in the daily COVID cases. Three vaccines are in advanced stages of development in India, out of which two are in Phase 2 and one is in Phase 3. Indian scientists and research teams are collaborating and strengthening research capacities in neighbouring countries, namely Afghanistan, Bhutan, Bangladesh, the Maldives, Mauritius, Nepal and Sri Lanka. There are further requests from Bangladesh, Myanmar, Qatar and Bhutan for clinical trials in their countries. In an effort to help the global community, the Prime Minister further directed that the country should not limit its efforts only towards the immediate neighbourhood but should also reach out to the entire world in providing vaccines, medicines and IT platforms for vaccine delivery system. The National Expert Group on Vaccine Administration for COVID-19, in consultation with state governments and all relevant stakeholders, presented a detailed blueprint of vaccine storage, distribution and administration. The expert group, in consultation with the states, is working actively on vaccine prioritization and distribution of vaccine. The Prime Minister directed that access to the vaccine should be ensured speedily, keeping in view the geographical span and diversity of the country. The Prime Minister's office in a statement said two pan-India studies on the genome of SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 virus conducted by the Indian Council of Medical Research and Department of Biotechnology suggest that the virus is genetically stable and there is no major mutation in the virus. The PMO said coronavirus vaccine will not be affected as no major mutation was in the virus. The meeting was attended by Union Health Minister Harsh Vardhan, Principal Secretary to Prime Minister Niti Aayog Member, Principal Scientific Advisor, Senior Scientists, Officers of PMO and other government departments. Ministry of Health has said that India has exponentially scaled up its testing capacity from 1 in January to more than 9.32 crore at present. In a tweet this morning, the ministry said the very high testing has resulted in the continuous falling positivity rate and it has now fallen below 8%. 
It said very comprehensive testing has thus worked as a highly effective tool to curb the spread of COVID-19 infection. The health ministry said it also leads to early identification, prompt isolation and effective treatment of COVID-19 cases and eventual low fatality rate. In Tripura, 134 fresh cases of COVID were registered, while 187 patients were discharged in the past 24 hours. Also, with the death of three patients yesterday, the death toll has risen to 326. The state COVID-19 bulletin reported that the total number of infected people rose to 29,327 out of the total of 4,28,978 samples tested so far. Officials said that so far 26,199 patients have recovered from coronavirus infections, while 2,776 patients are presently undergoing treatment. In Kerala, as COVID cases are on a continuous rise, a high-level central team is presently visiting various regions of the state, taking stock of the situation. More from our correspondent. Today, the central team is visiting Ernagulam district, which is recording very high number of COVID cases in recent days. Yesterday, the team had a high-level meeting with officials in state capital, Tiruvananthapuram. They will visit Trishu district tomorrow. The central team, deputed my Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, is taking stock of the COVID preventive measures and treatment facilities in the state and will also support the state's efforts to strengthen containment, surveillance, testing, infection prevention and control measures and efficient clinical management of COVID positive cases. Meanwhile, the present major concern of Kerala is the test positivity rate continuing to remain high of over 14%. Presently, there are 96,004 active COVID cases in Kerala. Mayusha for AR News from Tiruvannadapuram. Telangana State reported 1,436 new COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours. With this, the total number of COVID cases in the state has gone up to 2,22,111. The state conducted over 41,000 tests yesterday. The recovery rate has also marginally improved to 89.5% with 2,154 more people recovering yesterday. This took the number of recovered people so far in the state to 1,98,790. Meanwhile, the daily bulletin issued by the State Medical and Health Department this morning stated that total deaths rose to 1,271, following six more people succumbing to COVID-19 in the past 24 hours. Currently, the state has little over 22,000 active cases out of which 18,379 are in home isolation. Film producer Boni Kapoor says, Corona pandemic is a challenge, but by just following the precautions, we can defeat the virus unitedly. Talking to AIR News, Mr. Kapoor said, in view of the upcoming festival season, we must remain more alert and vigilant and not let our guard off. We are in the midst of this pandemic which has engulfed the entire world. In the coming season where we have festivals of Dasera, Diwali and Christmas, one should avoid big gatherings and one has got to wear a mask, keep a safe distance and at the same time you know, keep on washing your hands to make sure that you don't carry this virus. Together we will win. We will fight against COVID-19. The BJP today slammed Congress leader Shashi Tharoor for defaming India and lauding Pakistan's COVID fight. Briefing reporters in New Delhi, party spokesperson Sambit Patra alleged that Shashi Tharoor mocked India's COVID fight. He said Mr. Tharoor is saying that the government of India is failing in the management of COVID. Mr. Patra said the whole world is watching how Narendra Modi protected the people during the pandemic and served food to 80 crore people. COVID ko lekar pura vishwa dekh raha hai. कि आज हिंदुस्तान ने नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में किस प्रकार से अपने आप को सुरक्षित रखा समय से लॉकडाउन हुआ 80 करोड़ लोगों तक खाद्यान्न पहुंचाने का काम किया गया हाईएस्ट रिकवरी एंड लोएस्ट मोर्टेलिटी पूरे विश्व में है तो वो हिंदुस्तान में है उसके बावजूद इस प्रकार का स्टेटमेंट देना कि इंडियन गवर्नमेंट हैज फेल्ड वह भी लाहौर में आप सोचिए किस प्रकार की मनस्थिति कांग्रेस पार्टी और शशि थरूर जी की है very heavy rains caused fresh spells of flooding in several parts of Hyderabad. More colonies are facing floods following a breach in a major lake at Balanagar near Hyderabad. Heavy rains in Hyderabad and other parts of Telangana caused deaths of 50 people and huge damage just a couple of days ago. A five-year-old died when an old wall collapsed at Mangalhat in the city. Meanwhile, Met officials issued an orange warning asking people to be prepared for any eventuality. They warned intense spells of rainfall along with thunderstorm at many places in Hyderabad and neighboring areas for the next three days due to formation of another low pressure. 
More details from our Hyderabad correspondent. Rainwater that flooded some residential colonies in Hyderabad during last week is yet to recede and the fresh spells of last evening's heavy downpour added difficulties for residents at many places in the twin cities of Hyderabad and Sikandarabad. Balapur Lake near Hyderabad breached last evening. Two teams of National Disaster Response Force and 19 teams of Disaster Response Force of JHMC are carrying out relief works. About 170 monsoon emergency teams are clearing water stagnations. Over 300 motor pumps have been deployed for pumping out flood water and removing piled up sludge from the residential complexes. Intense spraying of anti-larval and bleaching activities are underway to contain spread of coronavirus. Besides, mobile health camps have been sent to the drain-affected areas in Hyderabad limits. Lakshmi, AIR News, Hyderabad. In North Karnataka, the heavy rainfall in the last few days has thrown life out of gear and caused extensive damage to property. According to the data released by the Karnataka State Disaster Monitoring Center, 22,752 people in Kalburgi, Vijaypura, Raichur and Yadgir are displaced and sheltered in 151 relief camps. Out of 245 villages along the river banks, 83 villages were found vulnerable to flooding and 20,269 villagers living there were evacuated to safety. The NTRF Fire and Emergency Agencies evacuated 448 persons stranded on river banks. According to a preliminary estimate, the rains have damaged 379 houses partially and four houses completely in the last 24 hours. In the data released on October 15, the rains have damaged 2,712 houses partially and 318 houses completely. More from our correspondent. Bhima River is at spate due to excess water released from Maharashtra dams. In Kalburgi district, Bhima and Kagina rivers are at spate. The 225 villages stranded in Urchana village in Afzalpur Taluk were rescued. Around 500 houses in the village have submerged due to the flooding. A temple near Bhima River built over a height of 300 feet near Garnagapura Sangama has submerged. 98 army men are working in three teams to rescue stranded villagers in Afzalpur, Zevargi and Shahabad Taluk. Three NDRF teams along with police, fire and SDRF members are carrying out rescue measures here. In Yadgiri district, 42 villages are affected due to overflowing Bhima River. It is estimated that the river water has inundated crop over 6,000 hectares. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. In Maharashtra, widespread damage has been caused to the standing crops due to incessant rainfall in Sangli, Satara and Kolhapur districts. In Sangli alone, crops spread across 10,000 hectares have been damaged, whereas in Kolhapur, more than 24,950 farmers have been affected due to the rainfall that lashed parts of western Maharashtra for four consecutive days last week. Our Mumbai correspondent has more details. The crops of grapes, jowar, sugarcane, banana, maize and soybeans have been severely hit due to the incessant rains that wreaked havoc in parts of Sangli, Satara and Kolhapur. The state's agriculture and revenue departments will undertake the panchanama to assess the damage that has been caused to the stranding crops. In Sangli district, 123 villages have been affected due to the rainfall. Guardian Minister of Sangli, Jayant Patil, said that those farmers who have insured their crops should inform about the damage they have suffered to the concerned insurance companies. He also directed the officials to submit the proposal after the assessment of Panchanamas. The heavy downpour has also taken a toll on livestock. In Kolhapur, crops spread across 337 hectares of land have been damaged. As many as 24,950 farmers have suffered losses with the standing crops getting washed away. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre will visit Solapur district tomorrow to take stock of the situation. Kunal Shinde, AIR News, Mumbai. Brahmos, the supersonic cruise missile, was successfully test fired today from Indian Navy's indigenously built stealth destroyer, INS Chennai, hitting a target in the Arabian Sea. The missile hit the target successfully with pinpoint accuracy after performing high level and extremely complex maneuvers. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh congratulated DRDO and the Indian Navy for the successful launch. Secretary Department of Defense Research and Development and DRDO Chairman Dr. G. Satish Reddy congratulated the scientists and all personnel of DRDO, Brahmos, Indian Navy and the industry for the successful feat. DRDO Chairman Dr. Reddy said Brahmos missiles will add to the capabilities of Indian armed forces in many ways. 
Davos as prime strike weapon will ensure the warship's invincibility by engaging naval surface targets at long ranges, thus making the destroyer another lethal platform of Indian Navy. The highly versatile Brahmos has been jointly designed, developed and produced by India and Russia. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Country's COVID-19 recovery rate crosses 88%. Rescue and relief operations in full swing in rain-ravaged parts of Telangana, Karnataka and Maharashtra. Brahmos, the supersonic cruise missile successfully test fired today from Indian Navy's indigenously built test destroyer INS Chennai in the Arabian Sea. BJP leader and Union Home Minister Amit Shah says Nitish Kumar will be the next Chief Minister of Bihar even if BJP gets more seats. National capital Delhi's air quality continues to be poor as trouble burning in neighboring states causes concern. And in IPL cricket today, Sunrisers Hyderabad will take on Kolkata Knight Riders in Abu Dhabi, while Mumbai Indians face Kings 11 Punjab in Dubai. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. अरे भाई सुना तुमने अरे इस मुश्किल समय में सरकार ने हम कामगारों की मदद के लिए एक और बड़ा कदम उठाया है कौन सा कदम पात्रता के नियमों में छूट के साथ ईएसआईसी ने अटल बीमित व्यक्ति कल्याण योजना के तहत मिलने वाली राहत राशि को बढ़ाकर दुगना कर दिया है अच्छा पात्रता की शर्तों को पूरा करने वाले जरूरतमंद बीमित व्यक्ति राहत के लिए ऑनलाइन दावा www.esic.in पर करें अधिक जानकारी के लिए अपने नजदीकी ईएसआईसी शाखा कार्यालय से संपर्क करें या फिर टोल फ्री नंबर एक आठ शून्य शून्य एक एक दो पाँच दो छः पर कॉल करें In Bihar, campaigning is in full swing in poll-bound constituencies of first and second phase of assembly elections. The first phase of polling will be held in 71 assembly constituencies on 28 October, while in the second phase, 94 assembly segments will go to polls on 3rd November. Leaders of NDA and the Grand Alliance are holding several public meetings in different assembly segments. Star campaigners and union ministers are leading the BJP campaign. Besides former Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis, Union Ministers Ravi Shankar Prasad, R.K. Singh, Nityanand Rai and Ashwani Kumar Chaube are addressing rallies in support of the NDA candidates. Ravi Shankar Prasad will address rallies in Kaimur and Chenari. Senior BJP leader and Deputy G- CM Sushil Kumar Modi addressing a rally in Chausa appealed to people to vote for NDA for a developed Bihar, rising above caste and religion lines. JDU President and Chief Minister Nitish Kumar is stressing on development works of his government in his election rallies. He addressed a rally in Baksar. Mr. Kumar will hold public meetings in Navanagar, Tarari and Jagdishpur also later in the day. The Chief Ministerial Candidate of Grand Alliance and RJD leader Tejasvi Prasad Yadav said in a public meeting at Chanan that providing employment and development works is his prime agenda. He will hold six public meetings today in Gaya, Patna, Nawada, Sheikhpura and Jamui districts. More from our correspondent. Leaders of other alliances like Grand United Secular Front and Progressive Democratic Alliance are also addressing the public meetings in support of their candidates. Bahujan Samaj Party and Rastriya Lok Samta Party are leading the Grand United Secular Front. The front has also partners like Asaduddin Novaisi led AIMIM, Suhez Dev Bharatiya Samaj Party and Samajwadi Janta Dal. BSP Chief Mayawati and RLSP President Upendra Kushwaha will launch a joint poll campaign. Pappu Yadav led Janadikar Party and his Progressive Democratic Alliance has also fielded several candidates for all the three phases. Mr. Yadav is addressing several rallies. Lok Jan Sakti Party President Chirag Paswan is yet to launch his poll campaign. Dharmendra Kumar Rai, AIR News, Patna. Meanwhile, Union Home Minister Amit Shah has said that Nitish Kumar will be the next Chief Minister of Bihar, even if the BJP gets more seats in the Assembly elections. Talking to a TV channel, Mr. Shah claimed that the NDA will get a two-thirds majority in the polls. He said that the BJP has made a public announcement about Nitish Kumar as Bihar's CM face. There is no if or but. Nitish Kumar will be the next Chief Minister of Bihar, he said. When Nitish Kumar Ji was with our government, तब से भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने फैसला किया था कि बिहार का जो 2020 का चुनाव है वो हम नीतीश कुमार जी के नेतृत्व में लड़ेंगे मैं आज फिर से दोहराना चाहता हूं कि चुनाव बिहार में 
श्री नीतीश कुमार के नेतृत्व में लड़ा जा रहा है और नरेंद्र मोदी जी एनडीए के सर्वमान्य प्रमुख नेता हैं उनके नेतृत्व में लड़ा जा रहा है तो जो कुछ भी भ्रांतियां फैलाने का प्रयास कर रहा है मैं आज इस पर बड़ा फुल स्टॉप लगाना चाहता हूं नीतीश कुमार ही बिहार के अगले मुख्यमंत्री हों Talking about the Lok Jan Shakti Party breaking away from the ruling alliance in Bihar, Mr. Shah said the party was offered adequate seats but still walked away from the alliance. Mr. Shah also made it clear that any possibility of LJP's return to the NDA can be looked into only after Bihar elections. Party procurement for the current Kharif marketing season is in full swing. Over 76 lakh tons of paddy has been procured from 6 lakh 69 thousand farmers. The Agriculture Ministry said that the government continues to procure kharif crops at its minimum support price from farmers as per its existing MSP scheme. The total MSP value to date has been to the tune of over 14,495 crore rupees. The ministry said the approval was accorded for procurement of over 41 lakh tons of pulses and oil seeds for the states of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Telangana, Gujarat, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Orissa, Rajasthan and Andhra Pradesh under price support scheme. The government through its nodal agencies has procured over 723 tons of moong and urad having MSP value of 5 crore 21 lakh rupees benefiting 681 farmers in Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Haryana. Delhi's air quality continued to be in the poor category this morning. According to the System of Air Quality and Weather Forecasting and Research, SAFAR, the overall air quality index of the national capital was recorded at 303. It said an increase in stubble burning was observed yesterday around Punjab, Haryana and neighboring border region. SAFAR said an increase in stubble burning's contribution in PM2.5 is estimated at around 19% for today. The Pondicherry University celebrated its 36th Foundation Day yesterday. Dr. Ramanan Ramanathan, Director, Atal Innovation Mission, and Additional Secretary Niti Aayog participated and delivered distinguished lecture on the topic, Innovation, the Driver for Transforming Higher Educational Institutions. Here is a report from our correspondent. Dr. Ramanan pointed out that innovation has a key role in empowering India's demographic dividend to pursue entrepreneurship and a nation building. He said that India is improving its position in the global innovation ranking and elaborated the impact of the activities that Adal Innovation Mission has launched. Besides, he spoke on the five pillars of Atma Nirbar Bharat and how higher educational institutions can promote innovation culture to become self-reliant and sustainable in the light of National Education Policy 2020. Professor Gurmit Singh, Vice Chancellor of Pondicherry University, highlighted the need for introducing innovative and multidisciplinary programs and enhancing digital infrastructure to embrace National Education Policy 2020. The event was conducted online by Google Meet. It was attended by a large audience chandra mohan air news puducherry this is all india radio giving you the news chalo dil se ek shuruaat kare chalo ek faisla aaj kare maat nahi to tokenge karuna ko rokenge chalo ek सुना तुमने अरे इस मुश्किल समय में सरकार ने हम कामगारों की मदद के लिए एक और बड़ा कदम उठाया है कौन सा कदम पात्रता के नियमों में छूट के साथ ई ने अटल बीमित व्यक्ति कल्याण योजना के तहत मिलने वाली राहत राशि को बढ़ाकर दुगना कर दिया है हाँ अच्छा पात्रता की शर्तों को पूरा करने वाले जरूरतमंद बीमित व्यक्ति राहत के लिए ऑनलाइन दावा डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू करें अधिक जानकारी के लिए अपने नजदीकी ई शाखा कार्यालय ऐसी संपर्क करें या फिर टोल फ्री नंबर एक आठ शून्य शून्य एक एक दो पाँच दो छह पर कॉल करें चिंता से मुक्ति देखिए फिल्म जगत के कई मशहूर कलाकारों के साथ भगवान श्री राम के जन्म स्थान अयोध्या से राम लीला डी नेशनल पर लाइव सत्रह से पच्चीस अक्टूबर रोज शाम सात बजे से रात दस बजे तक 
और इसका पुनः प्रसारण 18 से 26 अक्टूबर डीडी भारती पर सुबह 9 बजे से दोपहर 12 बजे तक और दोपहर 3 बजे से शाम 6 बजे तक डीडी नेशनल पर Prime Minister Narendra Modi today congratulated Prime Minister of New Zealand Jacinda Ardern on her resounding victory. In a tweet Mr Modi said he is looking forward to working together for taking India New Zealand relationship to a higher level. The new services division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone in program today will bring you a special discussion program on COVID-19. Dr Aparna Agarwal professor of medicine Lady Harding Medical College will participate in the discussion. Listeners can ask questions to the experts on toll-free telephone number 1800115767. You can also ask questions on telephone number 0112331444 and post queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by the hashtag #AskAIR. This can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9:30 p.m. onwards. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed grief on the demise of Dr Joseph Marthoma the spiritual head of the Marthoma Christian community who passed away today in a tweet Mr Modi said Dr Joseph Marthoma metropolitan was a remarkable personality who served humanity and worked hard to improve the lives of the poor and downtrodden In IPL cricket Sunrisers Hyderabad will take on Kolkata Knight Riders in Abu Dhabi while Mumbai Indians will face Kings 11 Punjab in Dubai today Meanwhile Delhi Capitals defeat Chennai Super Kings by 5 wickets in Sharjah last night Shikhar Dhawan smashed his maiden IPL century and Akshar Patel whacked three sixes in the final over to help the Delhi team Dhawan smashed 101 runs off 58 balls and recorded his first ever century in the IPL to guide Delhi Capitals to the top spot earlier after opting to bat first Amrti Rayadu and Ravindra Jadeja's knocks powered Chennai Super Kings to 179 for 4 in their 20 overs. For Delhi Capitals, Narkia claimed 2 wickets while Rabada and Deshpande bagged 1 wicket each. In Jammu and Kashmir an assistant sub inspector ASI of Central Reserve Police Force was injured in a grenade attack by terrorists in South Kashmir's Pulwama district today. CRPF sources said the terrorists lobbed a grenade towards the CRPF party in main town of Thral area in which one ASI of the CRPF received splinter injuries. He was immediately rushed to a nearby hospital for further treatment and his condition is stable. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. The temperature in the national capital Delhi will hover between 17 and 35 degrees Celsius. It will mainly have clear sky. In Mumbai there will be partly cloudy sky the minimum temperature was 27 degrees celsius and the maximum will be around 33 degrees Chennai will witness cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle the temperature will hover between 25 and 32 degrees celsius Kolkata will witness partly cloudy sky the minimum and the maximum temperature in the metropolis will be 28 degrees and 35 degrees celsius On to the north in the new union territory of Jammu and Kashmir the minimum temperature was 16 degrees celsius in Jammu while the maximum will be around 35 degrees the city will have mainly clear sky the temperature in Srinagar will hover between 5 and 26 degrees celsius Leh in Ladakh recorded minimum temperature of minus 5 degrees celsius and the maximum will be around 20 degrees Gilgit will experience mainly clear sky partly becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening The temperature will hover between 5 and 29 degrees Celsius. In Muzaffarabad there will be mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature was 11 and the maximum 32 degrees Celsius. The cyclonic circulation over west central bay of Bengal off south andhra pradesh coast persists and now extends up to 1.5 kilometers above mean sea level. Under the influence light to moderate rains with thunderstorms are likely to occur at many places of north coastal andhra pradesh and at a few places over rail sima with isolated heavy rains at one or two places today. And now before we close this bulletin the headlines once again. Country's COVID-19 recovery rate crosses 88%. Rescue and relief operations in full swing in the rain-ravished parts of Telangana, Karnataka and Maharashtra. Brahmos the supersonic cruise missile successfully test fired today from Indian Navy's indigenously built stealth destroyer INS Chennai in Arabian Sea. BJP leader and Union Home Minister Amit Shah says Nitish Kumar will be the next Chief Minister of Bihar even if BJP gets more seats. National capital Delhi's air quality continues to be poor as stubble burning in neighboring states causes concern. 
and in IPL cricket today, Sunrisers Hyderabad will take on Kolkata Knight Riders, while Mumbai Indians face Kings XI Punjab. And with that, we end the midday news.